Let's talk about the data for a second, because I think that's also kind of scary for people. And since you have Google as an investor and you're a little bit associated with that company, people are a little bit scared about data. And you kept talking about the um, consumers owning their data, and that's really yeah. important to you. What data do you own? And what are the data rights, especially to the people who maybe did this at a discounted price? Um, and should people be absolutely scared that something's going to happen with their data? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think over, so this, the whole concept of like being terrified of data, I think in part comes because like traditionally in research or actually in a lot of companies even, like you sign over the rights and then they never tell you what happens. Um, and part of what we're like, in, you know, I when I was on Wall Street and I would hear about this, like this idea of a human subject, like you fill out a long consent form and then you sign away your rights and you are a human subject, like kind of terrifies me. Like, I want to know what you're doing with it. I had one really, yeah, I've had some scary experiences with doctors who are like, oh, I took a picture of you in this way and I used it in a presentation. And I'm like, what? You did what? Like, exactly. what did you do? Yeah. Um, and, and so most people don't know what they've signed. So we're trying to do the exact opposite, where we're trying to say, um, like, we will honor your privacy and privacy being defined as a definition of, like, who do you want to share it with? It might be that you want to share it with no one. And it might be that you are an individual with sarcoma and you want all researchers in the world to have access to it. And so we want to enable you to control your data. And so it's a really about that control. So you sign up, 80% of our customers consent for research. And then once you're in that research pool, you have the additional opportunity of saying, do you want to take a survey on sexuality? You don't have to. Some people might be opposed. You can, you cannot. You want to take a survey on Parkinson's. You want to take a survey on allergies. So depending on what's of interest to you, you can kind of vote with your feet about what is it that's of interest. And then we say, we're going to do partnerships with, with pharma companies and academics, but in the aggregate data level. Right. And um, so your individual level information is never going out the door, but it's the aggregate information. And if we ever are going to do a project with your individual level data, we'll go back and we'll ask for your explicit consent. And what so I'll get an email and I'll check a box. You'll get an email. I mean, usually it involves more work. Like, hey, can I come and get a punch biopsy from you? Yeah. Um, so so you're, you're quite aware of right. that. Um, but people, I mean, the consent rates that we have for individual level data is extraordinarily high. And I think part of, like, you see the goodwill enthusiasm of people who want to go and do walks and, you know, participate and change the world. Like, if all of you had a friend who's like, oh, my child has epilepsy, will you help me with this? Like, could you yeah, be a positive? Of Everyone's going to do it. And so that's kind of what we're trying to tap into is, like, how do you do that and really doing it for good? Like, we have kind of this tie, like, genetics for good. Like, you can do good things. And the most important thing for me is, like, you should be aware of it. So when we do content contracts with pharma and, part and academics, one of the big contention points we have is we have a requirement that you have to publish in open access journals. Right. So again, because like that whole world's never going to change. But like it's insulting to me that if I have a consumer population of 850,000 people and then they have to pay $25 to read a report about yeah. their data, it's kind of insulting. So, so it should be available. And yeah. so we have a list of all the publications that we have, and we have, you know, I mean, a lot of consumers, you know, like there's a, a, a Time Magazine article today about our paper on motion sickness. So people can read about that, and they know if they've taken that survey. Tell me about that, because that's like my kryptonite. I actually have, like, horrible motion sickness. Oh, do you? Wow. Well, yeah. well, you could look at, I mean, part of what you can see is you can look online now, and you can, you can fix look it? at your raw data. Yeah. I don't think we can fix it, but, like, maybe we can, like, that can lead to some kind of targeted identification. Ah, so you find out, like, this group of people yeah. have it. And then some well, research. Well, it could be fun. Like if you have, uh, for instance, you have small children. They don't speak. You're driving down to yeah. Big Sur. Are they going to vomit or not? Because you yes. could probably prep your car. And Eighty-two percent. Yeah. Or whatever percentage. <laughs> yeah, something. No, you just described my entire childhood. Yeah. It's like literally me outside the window. We will cover you in plastic. 